you know, nuclear protection, one of the, the tenets of nuclear protection is time, distance, and shielding. And so in Misawa, we subscribe to distance. And so we're quite a ways away from the unfortunate events at Fukushima. So we're approximately 230 some odd miles away. And so you look at different models and different plumes, and they say you know, that uh, radioactive contamination is only traveling approximately 70 miles uh, from that location. And as time goes on, those uh, concentration of radioactivity is, is going down. So, and what's interesting, so models are just that, they're models. However, when you get multiple models that agree with one another, our confidence goes way up and we feel pretty good that, that they're accurate. And additionally, here at Masawa, uh, we regularly conduct um, air sampling for back, background radiological, just what's in the air. You know, radiation is all around us, so there is radiation here. Um, normal, natural background radiation. And so we know what that background number is, and then we're conducting background radiation sampling right now, and we don't see any elevated levels whatsoever. And so that, that's, that would be a trigger for us to know, hey, we're getting, starting to get some readings, and, uh, and then we'd evaluate further. But we haven't seen anything elevated, and uh, we feel safe with that. It all depends on the type of, it gets a little bit complicated, it depends on the type of isotope that we're looking at. So there are many different radioactive isotopes and they all have different kind of contaminate, uh, different kind of levels that, uh, you know, some are more hazardous than others. So uh, we currently see between 200 counts per minute all the way up to 700 counts per minute and we don't find those uh, abnormally high. And so a general rule of thumb is if you see twice background radiation, uh, then you got the presence of some sort of additional radiation. It doesn't mean it's hazardous, just means that, hey, there's an extra radiation here. And again, uh, you know, when we get to these levels that we see on these plots and plumes, we're looking at um, 0.1 rem, uh, which is, you know, kind of equivalent to chest x-rays or medical examination. CT scans would be uh, another example. Uh, CT scans more radiation than what we're seeing on these plots and plumes that we're talking about. That's correct. Not no. So again, time distance and shielding and our distance is just so much greater than where these plumes are traveling. And additionally, so the winds, uh, the predominant winds for Masawa at this time are from the northwest and they're and they're blowing away and out to sea so not only are the plumes not big enough that they're not able to travel up to the south they're not even going in the right direction they're blowing out to sea which is good for us okay. highly unlikely to make it back to the united states uh, radiation will disperse and spread in that distance so you know, that's another thing to, to comment on is that these plots and plumes that people look at, you have to be careful and take a look at the at the legend and what they're because you can draw a pretty big, nasty looking plume, but if the concentration is really, really small, then it's not hazardous. So some of the you know the CNN and the, and the news stories are showing these big plumes and draw these scary colors around it, but the levels that those are depicting are just not hazardous. So um, you have to be careful about the plots and plumes that you're taking a look at. Um, it's unfortunate the events that happened at Fukushima. The fortunate aspect for Masawa is that we're just not in the proximity of that radioactive contamination reaching us. And so we've got a lot of things going for us. Distance, the predominant winds, actively sampling, um, and haven't seen any any uh, contamination at this location, nor do the do the uh, models predict that. And as time goes on, uh, the, the uh, potential for a large release goes down. They're, they're cooling those reactors at Fukushima, and, uh, and they're getting their handle around the situation. So. bases are not in danger. They've 
again, we're talking about, so radiation is ubiquitous, it's all around us, and however, uh, the, it's all about the level of radiation. So there's some additional amount of radiation. Uh, if you fly from Los Angeles to New York City, you're gonna get about four times more radiation uh, than they're seeing at, uh, actually, if you fly from Los Angeles to New York, you're gonna see about an equal amount of radiation that the folks at Atsugi quoted that they were receiving. So it's, a, it's an airline flight that they're receiving. Fukushima number number four, their their reactor caught on fire again. I believe this morning was the last that I saw. The other thing that I did see though was that they had removed all. So four, five, and six were uh, shut down and non-operational. Number four didn't have any fuel in it. The fuel rods had been removed. So obviously a fire is a, a bad uh, and undesirable event. But they unfortunately number four is probably the best one to have a fire at. There's no uh, fuel rods in that uh, reactor. Now, just uh, again, careful looking at the, the models and what they're saying. Uh, go into a reputable source. So the, the source, the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA.org, is a good one that, that I go to. Um, and, and a credible source is going to go a long way uh, as opposed to uh, Facebook chats and, and so-called experts from the United States are um, commenting in. On, on these hazards that, that just aren't substantiated with the, the data that we're looking at. Well, we sample for radiation quarterly, and so it's important for us to have a baseline. So you know, the, the question arises, what do you do with the number when you get, with, when you get a number? Uh, what is, uh, uh, so we need to compare that to our background radiation, compare that to our normal background radiation and so we've got data um, uh, since I've been here for the last 18 months we've collected quarterly um, that's on a, a base by base determinant so uh, I'm additionally on the installation radiation safety officer so that was one of the things I started when I got here so 